For some examples, we are going to practice, this is an exponential form, and we're going to practice writing it in logarithmic form. So one of the things I need to know is what is my base? So my base is 4. So I'm going to convert this by saying I have a logarithm in base 4, so it drops to a subscript. And then the argument is the answer, which is 64, and it equals the exponent. Equals the exponent. So just make sure that your bases match and then the rest of it kind of sort of falls in place-ish. All right, so now what happens if we start with a logarithm and we want to convert that back into exponential? So remember, you can always put parentheses if you don't see them. Um, and I'll explain in a future section why we do it sometimes and not other times, but for right now, we're just trying to get through this section. So again, let's start with the base. So what is my base? My base is 5. So I know that I'm working with an exponential in base 5. And to me, going from logarithms into exponentials is easier because if you'll put the logarithm on the left, you just have to do a backward circle. So 5 raised to this power, so 5 to the second, will give you an answer of 25. So 5 raised to the second will give you an answer of 25. And then we just want to leave it like that because we're practicing bouncing back and forth between the two um, types of equations. So what happens if I have log of uh, base root 6 of 36 equals 4? So I'm given this in uh, logarithmic, now I want to move it into exponential. So what is my base? My base is the square root of 6. And so I'm going to write that as the square root of 6. And since the log is on the left, I can do a backward circle and say that that's raised to the fourth power, and that's going to equal 36. So if you'd like to, you can put that in parentheses if it helps you see it a little bit clearer. But root 6 raised to the 4th is 36. So now let's back up for just a second and read these. Um, the way that we read these, because I can all day long, I can say 4 to the 3rd is 64, or you know something like that. But since logarithms theoretically are new, the way I would read this is log base 4 of 64 is 3. Log base 5 of 25 is 2. Log base root 6 of 36 is 4. So those are just ways that I, um, that's how I'm going to read it back and forth. So now we actually want to solve. So what I have is x equals log base 3 of 1 27th. And what I want to do is put the log on the left because that's going to help me see things. So I've got the log on the left. And now something that you should put in your little pocket is if you've got a log equal to something else, you're going to change it back into exponential. So if I have a log equal to something else, my strategy is going to be to change it to exponential. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it doing a backward circle. So that gives me 3 to the x power is 1 over 27. If I can make my bases match, I'll be where I was in the previous section, and I can just deal with um, I don't have to deal with logs because I can make my bases match. So I do know that 27 is a power of 3. So I can rewrite this as 1 over 3 to the third. And now if only I could bring that up top where the 1 is, which I can, with a negative exponent. So now I've got 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the negative 3. And so now that I know that my bases match, Grab your exponents and deal with them, and you're actually done. There's no other work to do. So what this says is 3 raised to the negative third power is 1 27th. So your answer is negative 3. All right, so let's solve another one. We have log base x, meaning I don't know what my base is, of 27 is negative 3. So since I've got a log on one side and something else on the other, I'm going to change this to an exponential. So I've got x to the negative 3 is 27. 
Okay, x to the negative 3 is 27. And this is where our exponential rules are going to come into play. Because if I raise both sides to the negative 1 third, remember what we did before. Where did my little notes go? Okay, if I have, um, what am I looking for? Hang on. If I raise a power to a power, I'm going to multiply those two things. So if I raise this to a negative, it'll go positive. And then 3 times 1 third is 1. Okay, so I'm going to raise both sides to the negative 1 third, negative 1 third. And that gives me x equals 27 to the negative 1 third. Well, I need to see if that's pretty. So first of all, that negative is throwing me off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that negative. That means drop whatever it's attached to to the other part of the fraction. So I've done what that negative said to do. So now I've got 27 to the 1 third power. Well, that's another fancy way of writing the cubed root of 27. And I happen to know that the cubed root of 27 is 3. So that gives me 1 third. Okay, so 1 third to the negative 3 gives me 27. 1 third to the negative 3 gives me 27. All right. So we're going to solve another one. So I've got the log base 5 of x is going to equal 3. So I've got a log on one side, set melts on the other. I'm going to go ahead and do the backward circle. So I've got 5 to the third equals x. Well, I know what 5 to the third is. It is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. So my answer is 125. So we have another one, log base one-fifth of x plus 4 equals negative 3. And now's the time, I'm going to go ahead and pause for a second. And now I'm going to tell you why we use parentheses sometimes and parentheses not other times. Because I could write that as log one-fifth of x plus 4 equals negative 3. Well, now you don't know if that plus 4 is part of the argument or if it's hanging off on the end. So that's when we would say, now it's part of the argument. Or I could have said, if it was a different problem, I could have said x plus 4 is negative 3. And now it's not part of the argument. So to get the log by itself, I would have subtracted 4 from both sides. So this time, we intentionally used the parentheses to make sure that you knew what we were talking about. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got a log on one side, something else on the other. So I'm going to change that to exponential. So 1 fifth to the negative third equals x plus 4. That negative belongs to everything on the inside. So I'm going to flip the whole thing, which is 5 over 1. And then I'm too lazy to write the over 1. So I get 5 to the third is x plus 4. So again, the negative flipped it. So it was a 5 over 1. And then the negative, hang on, sorry, stupid cat was trying to get out. All right, so what I had was that negative actually made it into a 5 over 1 to the positive 3. Well, I'm too lazy to write 5 over 1, so I just wrote 5. Okay, so what I have now is I know what 5 to the third is. It is 125, and that equals x plus 4. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I get 121 equals x. 121 equals x. All right, moving on, we have log base x plus 2 of 7 is 1. And again, if you want to put that argument in parentheses, just to be more clear, you can. You don't have to, but there are times that you better. All right, so I got a log on one side, set melts on the other. So I'm going to take that x plus 2 to the first equals 7. Well, x plus 2 to the first is just x plus 2. So that equals 7 subtract 2, and we get x equals 5. So in other words, 5 plus 2 is 7. So 7 to the first is 7. So you're finding the exponent that makes an exponential true. All right, so now we want to expand. And this is going to be going back to um, what our log rules were. I'm sorry, what our uh, exponential rules were. So what I have is, remember that the answer to a logarithm is an exponential. So it makes it sound like it's coming out of left field, but it's not. 
So here's what I've got. I've got four different factors, which means I'm going to be able to um, write this thing out as four separate logs. So I'm going to try and make these colorful for you. Okay. And then I'm going to have C. And then I'm going to have D. Look, here's a blue one. Okay. So here's the deal. If it's joined by multiplication on the inside, it's going to be, div uh, sorry, addition on the outside. If it's division on the inside, it'll be subtraction on the outside. So let me show you the long way first. So I'm going to rewrite this thing as log base 11 of A times B times C to the negative 1 times D to the negative 1. So I brought that C up top with a negative exponent. And I brought that D up top with a negative exponent. Well, now this just says A times B times C times D with exponents. Okay. And what I'm going to do with that is I am going to give each factor his own log. So if it's joined by multiplication on the inside, it'll be joined by addition on the outside. So I've got log 11 of A plus log 11 of B plus log 11 of C to the negative 1, plus log 11 of d to the negative 1. So each logarithm, each factor, got his own logarithm. So there's a, here's b, okay, here's c, and then here's d in blue. So what we're doing is we're called, it's called expanding. Now, the last thing we need to do is if we are expanding, exponents are a no-no. Expanding means that exponents are a no-no. So I see this negative 1 right here, and I see that negative 1 right there. And I'm going to drop that out front as a coefficient. Okay? So this, he's going to stay the same. So I got log 11 of A plus log 11 of B. And now this negative 1 is going to drop out front. So minus log 11 of C minus log 11 of D. And that's all I can do. I have now expanded. Okay, so what does that mean? What that means is I can use exponent rules. So I need you to kind of think about this for just a second. If your bases are the same and you're multiplying, what does that mean? I threw my paper on the floor. Hang on. If your bases are the same and you are multiplying with exponent rules, what do you add to, or what do you do to exponents? If your bases are the same and you're multiplying, you add them. Okay? If your bases are the same and you're dividing, you subtract them. So remember the answer to a logarithm is simply an exponent. So we're applying exponent rules. We multiplied a whole bunch of stuff together. But in reality, I need to add those exponents together or I need to subtract those exponents. So I know it looks weird and it looks like we're just trying to trick you, but we're not. So, um, and then the other thing is I'm going to drop that negative. So exponents are a no-no, okay, if you, we are expanding. So now we're going to go backwards. I have an expanded logarithmic expression and I want to condense. So if I'm going to condense the very first thing I want to do is kick up my coefficients, okay? So if I have coefficients, I'm going to kick them up. So looking at this, I've got a coefficient of 1, coefficient of 1, coefficient of negative 1, but that's okay. That just means I'm going to drop down. So I'm going to have a single logarithm. My base is C. These are joined by addition, and so in the argument, I will put them together with multiplication. These are joined with subtraction. So in the argument, I'm going to drop down and make it division. And then I'm done. Okay? So again, what did I do? I had multiple logarithms, same base, multiple logarithms, and I condensed. So what that means is if it's joined with multiplication, or sorry, addition, I'm going to join it with multiplication on the inside. If it's joined with subtraction, I'm going to join it with division on the inside. So let's go for one more. We have 2 log base A of Z plus 3. 
and then plus log base a of 3z plus 5. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, I'm told to condense. I also know I should do that because I see a bunch of addition and subtraction. So this is a log plus a log. So I know I'm going to join it with multiplication on the inside. The issue is if I'm condensing, I need to kick up my coefficient. So this time I've got a coefficient of 2. So I'm going to pop him up, and he is now going to be an exponent. So he is z plus 3 squared plus log base a of 3z plus 5. So now I've kicked up my coefficients, and now I can look at the addition subtraction stuff. So if this is joined by addition on the outside, it's going to be joined by multiplication on the inside. And there you go. So that is this section.